All right. Hello, hello. What's going on at Facebook and all of social media? It's Dave Simney coming to you live. I'm super excited and ultimately just super pumped to come live with you today because I've been wanting to do this presentation for a while now. And I'm super excited because I wanted to kind of let the cat out of the bag. I wanted to kind of crack the code. I wanted to talk about, uh, I get hit up a lot, of, a lot about, should I join a brand new company? One that nobody's heard of, one that has this, you know, the favorite is the blue ocean, one that has this unlimited potential to go out and just make my name for myself. Should I join this brand new company? Um, what are the pros and cons? Or should I stick with you know, an established company. It's really got through the hurdles of the startup phase and, and all of that. So I wanted to break it down today um, and just tell you about the pros of, and cons. If you're in um, any type of business, this will probably apply to you, but specifically in the space where I've resided for over 15 years in the direct sale sales space, uh, social selling space, um, aka network marketing, MLM, whatever you want to call it. So here I am to tell you why. First of all, I want you to know there are a lot of gurus out there, okay? There are a lot of coaches, a lot of mentors, a lot of leaders, but here's what I will say. There's a lot of noise and people tend to just kind of take blind faith, whatever they believe on social media, whatever is posted. Um, and there's a lot of people out there that don't have a lot of experience. So I always love when, when I do some type of a, a live or a presentation, um, or I speak at the company or, or wherever I'm at, I like to establish, establish you know, why I'm qualified to even give this opinion, right? Because I think it's important who we're listening to, right? You don't want to listen to um, someone who's broke um, talk about finances, right? You don't want to listen to someone that's never worked on a car um, about mo what might be wrong with your car. So it's just common sense to understand. Um, so I'm 47 years old. Um, again, my name is David Simney. I have been um, a former corporate, ex corporate executive um, and employee number three, um, of a startup. So I've been through that phase uh, in the direct sales industry. Uh, we went from zero to um, uh, over 100 million in uh, about seven years. So we, we did a pretty good thing. I also served uh, on the corporate team of a company uh, also in the direct sales space that went from less than a billion dollars to $3 billion in three years. So I have the corporate direct sales experience on the corporate side. Um, I just celebrated six years in the field, as we call it, meaning not on corporate. I transitioned out in 2016. Um, I've been an ex expert witness in the legal field to uh, some major celebrities, um, probably the biggest pop star, well, multiple biggest pop stars in the world, although I have an NDA, so you won't be hearing the names. Um, I've been a tour manager uh, to several uh, gazillion dollar organizations uh, from Lady Gaga uh, to Lauren Hill and everywhere in between. I'm an investor. And uh, I started my career um, in the pages of Rolling Stone magazine as a musician opening for Metallica, believe it or not. So I've got a diverse experience. I've also been to college and um, graduated uh, at the top of my class. And so I have been out there hustling every day. I'm hustling. I've been out there for a long time. So I do feel qualified to talk about what I'm going to share with you. So question at hand today is, should I join a new company or what about a company that's been around the block for a minute, all right? And I want to clarify, when I say a company that's been around the block, I'm just talking about been around for five years or more, okay? Because there's, you're, this is going to mean a lot to you here in a few minutes when I share some statistics with you that are mind-blowing, all right? So, um, and by the way, I'm not talking to a company that's been around for 30 years and you line up 100 people on the street and everyone has heard of them. So we all know those companies, what I call legacy companies. A legacy company to me, just for the definition of today's purposes, um, and I'll say the companies, uh, Herbalife, you know, Avon, Mary Kay, you know, uh, Amway, right? These types of companies, legacy companies where you line up 100 people on the street and 99 out of 100 have probably heard of them. All right, I'm not talking about that today. We're gonna leave that for another conversation. But today I'm talking about brand new company, first year or two, um, maybe first few years, or a company that's been around for five years. Now, first we wanna start with a baseline. I'm talking about the health and wellness industry. And it's important to understand health and wellness is a $4 trillion industry. Um, it is just overarching growth, um, not only now, but it's predict predicted in 10 years to go to 7 trillion. 50% growth globally. All right, now the direct sales industry, and I want you to follow me here. You should probably jot this down if you're very serious about looking into this space. The direct sales industry um, is about $200 billion. And it's 
growing at about 5% year over year. Now that's great, but the personal care industry is 500 billion. If you can include the global beauty and the global personal care industry, 500 billion, half a trillion, and it's growing at seven and a half percent year over year. Collagen, $17 billion growing uh, year over year, 15%. Now, direct sales, here's what I want you to, to take away from this. The direct sales portion of the entire health and wellness industry, this is gonna shock you. The direct sales industry, meaning the market share of customers, 45 million buyers and customers right here in the US is literally only 5% of the entire health and wellness market. So that means 95% of people outside of direct sales aren't even really touched, if that makes sense. So when you talk about 45 million buyers just in the US in health and wellness, how many people are in the United States? We have 332 million people in the US, 45 million buyers and sellers of direct sales products, 332 million people in the country. If you take that percentage, that's 13%. So if I'm gonna plant my flag within a niche, which is still a niche, we're talking 5% of the entire health and wellness industry. If I'm gonna plant my flag at what is already a niche, I'd rather go, 95% and target the 95% versus the 13%. 45 million is 13% of the 332 million people that we have. I'd rather target 95 versus 13%. That's the first thing. Now we talk about a new company versus an established company. First of all, it's important to understand, and I'm not making up this statistic. In fact, I think this st statistic is even higher in direct sales. One in five New companies fail in their first year. That's from the Department of Labor. That's not Dave Simney heard about it, okay? Half of all new companies and new businesses fail in five years, 50%. Now, if you're in your 20s and you're grinding, I know when I was in my 20s, I took a lot of risks. If you're even in your 30s, boy, you got time. You're good. Go ahead. Take that risk. You know, high risk, high reward. That's what they say, right? But think about this as you sign up for that new shiny object. And I'm not I'm not bashing the new company, right? Every seems like every minute there's a new company and they got a billion dollar owner and they got all the stuff and it's going to be new and they pay the most and blah, blah, blah. I'll get into why new companies pay more money than many of the established companies for the first few months or the first year because they have startup capital because they don't want to fail because business people know that they fail within the first year and within the first five years, 50% fail. So they push all this CapEx, this investment and this money out to attract people with higher money, but not sustainability. So this is the key, right? Would I rather invest in one stock, right? Oh, I heard that's good. One stock or a mutual fund a proven with a proven five-year track record or 10-year track record, right? It's just common sense. To you and me, that's common sense, but people follow emotion. People follow other people. And so one person posts this heartfelt post about bullet point, bullet point, bullet point on social media, and their, their, their emotional side takes over. And they think, yes, I want to be the first. FOMO, you guys, is a real thing. And people use it against you as much as we want to say we use FOMO for us. You know, let's look at the reasons why people even start a, a business. They want more purpose or passion in their life. Um, they think it's the best way to build wealth, which I agree with. Uh, they don't want a boss anymore. Ooh, who likes a boss? Um, their friend did it. They join it because their friend did it or a family member did it. Um, uh, probably right in the middle reason um, is because of this craziness of 2020. They they thought, holy crud, we need a second income stream. Um, maybe they started a business because they got inspired because they saw a TV show like a Shark Tank or something. Um, some people start a, a business because they can't find a job. Some people recognize the tax benefits of 1099 where they can write off literally just by joining a home business. You get a certain percentage of write-offs. Um, so the tax, tax benefits, some people don't fit in in you know a giant environment with a ton of people they want. They want relationships and culture, uh, or maybe they're in a dead-end job. That's probably the big one. They just want more time and freedom. So these are all the reasons why people do it. Now, we hit the five-year mark, right? 50% are failing. Imagine starting a business right now. And I'm just going to tell you right now, your, your, your friend, she's a proven leader. She went viral on TikTok. And your friend joins a company and says, girl, you want to come? I'm saving you a spot. 
I'm grabbing you a spot. You're going to be at the top and you're every. Okay. Just, just know this. 50% chance you are going to fail. You are going to be out of business in five years from now. now nothing venture, nothing gained. You know, we know that, uh, you know, Gretzky, Wayne Gretzky said, you always miss 100% of the shots you never take. I totally get all that. And there is the first mover advantage. I mean, look, there's all these sayings that have been drilled into our head about opportunities, right? But I, I'm i at a phase in my life. And I can just tell you for me personally, once you hit 40, I don't know how many people are watching are 40 or more. Drop a hand. Let me know in the comments if you're 40 or more. When you hit 40, that's like a line in the sand. Now, probably not halfway through your life, but you're darn close if you're not halfway through your life, right? You're getting there. You're possibly on the back nine of the 18 hole golf course. And you start to go, hold on a second. I've got 20 or 30 years, you know, 20 years plus of experience in the workplace, you know, a workforce, uh, or let's just call it 10 or 15 years. And you've made some mistakes. Okay. So Normally, what I've found is you have sort of the younger people that jump into these brand new companies because they can afford the time, they can afford the risk. But here's what I'm going to say for those of you um, that understand business, all right? If you want to look at an established company, you want to look at the, um, the, the bullet points that are super, super valid. So I'm going to speak specifically about my company for just a minute because I know the mistakes that these small new companies make. They put way too much money out front to attract people. And then after three months, six months, or a year, the money runs out because they're paying very high out of their compensation model, right? And they have to change the compensation. Or the other thing they do is they put these big bonuses up front for your first order, second order, maybe even third order. And then what happens? They chop the percentage down by month number three or month number four, and they pay you either half or a third or maybe even one fourth of what you got in the first two or three months. Now that is a what I call a pop and drop, all right? So that's where you have this big lead up and pop. How many of you guys have heard of these companies in our direct sales space that have shot up to the top and everyone was in and everyone's making money and I'll post on the leaderboard. I grew, you know, 100%. It's easy, by the way, to grow 100% or 1,000%. If you go from one to 10 people on your team, you just grew 1,000%. So that's easy. Try being at a, a $2 million a month organization and growing 5% year over year consistently for 10 years. I'm going to tell you, that's where I would rather be than somebody that has one or two products that are creating a lot of buzz and then boom, everybody falls off and the wheels fall off the wagon and you've only got one or two products. So nobody, you can't fall back on any other products, right? So a bigger company is gonna have a bigger product line, a diverse product line, what we call sticky volume. They're gonna have more products that people want and need, different niches for riches, different verticals, right? Uh, especially if they're made in the USA, like my company, you're gonna have advantages you're going to have something for everything you're going to have something for everyone now you say well people have heard of that i will tell you this i'm going to challenge you to take it even not the name of my company but just take my company's called modere i'll just let the cat out of the bag my company if you lined up a hundred people on the street randomly hey have you heard of modere have you heard of modere have you heard of modere literally guys two or three people maybe out of a hundred have heard of modere it's just that because This industry is pretty small and the people who work, remember, direct sales is only 5% of the entire health and wellness industry. So the 5% is targeting the 13% instead of the 95. My company flipped the switch and we created and struck lightning with a concept called social retail. And coincidentally, it's now the model that everybody else follows. By the way, we got the inspiration from places like guilt.com. Go on any website from Zappos or guilt.com. And they have a give 10, get 10 model, get, you know, give out a coupon and get $10 in product credit. If somebody orders with your code, that's been around forever, right? Remember Groupon, Groupon was so awesome. I remember I got a free sledding, you know what I'm saying? Uh, a ticket to at a snow place for referring two or three friends. Anyway, guys, here's the deal, right? The market size outside of direct sales or MLM just is 95% versus five. 
Then the second thing is you want a customer focused business. When you've got a whole bunch of people jockeying for position and they're over here selling their thing, selling their thing, they cannibalize their own business. What you want is you don't want to have a business within the MLM exclusively. You want to target, like I said, the 95. You want to target 330 million people, not 45 million people. Do you follow me? So this is the advantage of having a company that's been involved five years or later. They've worked out the kinks after five years. They've fine-tuned the machine. They're, they've got the product line. They have the leadership. They have the compensation. And here's another statistic that'll blow your mind. And I worked on both types of these multi-billion dollar companies. The distance from zero to 500 million is about eight years, You know, five to eight years for a very successful company. If your company's been around for five, six, seven, eight years, and they're squeaking out at 20 million, 10 million, a million, you know, a hundred million. You got to ask yourself, what's going on here? Like, you know, if you're thinking big and you want to have a sustainable uh, business for your family and a legacy business, you need products with the highest reorder rates on planet earth. Okay. That's what we have. I mean, you talk about 80% plus reorder rates. That is massive. You want a company that's got between 13 and 17 customers for every marketer. Again, targeting the mass crowds, not just the, the network marketers who recruit, to recruit, to recruit, to recruit. Grab a spot, grab a spot. Ugh, can't stand that phrase. I don't know if I've ever said that. Or if I did, I said it jokingly. Um, you want the market size we talked about, the reorder rates. You also want to look at the compensation plan. Now, our, we're not competing with, you know, Joe Blow Business for Home Magazine. Hey, happy for you guys. If, you, if that's, your, that's your thing, you're in that business, great. I'm happy if, if that's your jam. No, our, our CEO is in Forbes, Ernst & Young Awards you know, uh, JP Morgan Chase, right? Business Week, Newsweek. We're in the real world. Like we're part of our CEOs, like one of the top 10 transformative, you know, CEOs on the entire health industry, right? So you don't see us winning these little awards in the little myopic direct sales space as compared to a $500 billion personal care industry. Think about this, 5% direct sales, 95% beauty industry. We're going after the 95%. And that's what you want. You don't want a company that has the stigma of a pyramid or an MLM or any of that. That's why fight an uphill battle. You want to be able to attract YouTubers, TikTokers, influencers, pastors, doctors, practitioners, estheticians, professionals, corporate people. Why limit yourself to 5%, right? Or if we're being generous, 13% of the overall buying public that's going to buy these products. That is just plain common sense. But so many people, they don't see the big picture. They're going for quick cash. They want fame. They want to beat they want to beat the notoriety. Totally get that. It's human nature. And I can't solve that for anybody. I can just hopefully boy be a voice of reason for you. All right. Now think about referrals, customers referring other customers. If you have a company that pioneered it, which we did, but also has literally made it virtually impossible for a customer not to want to refer another customer. You got to have loyal, rabid fans of a brand. And I'm going to use an example and just follow me here. Okay. Follow me here. Why on earth would you start a Chick-fil-A? You know what I'm saying? Everyone and their mother's heard of it. They've all heard of Chick-fil-A or Starbucks, right? Why would I do that? Well, let me see if there's not a Chick-fil-A in your town or there's not a Chick-fil-A on your block. Guess what? Buyers will be lined up out the door and Chick-fil-A's close on Sunday, right? How about Starbucks? Starbucks, you know, is a brand. You have your favorite product, but guess what? People all have their favorite products at Starbucks and they're all different, but you've all heard of it. You establish that a brand is a quality brand and a quality brand is something you can hitch your brand to because if you want to grow a business, you're growing your own personal brand. But the brand that you align is in synergy it has a symbiotic relationship with the company that you align with your credibility is at stake the product quality is at stake if they run out of products you're going to your your credibility is at stake if they can't keep up with the growth your credibility is at stake if they can't pay people on time or ship people on time or the products are always breaking or whatever the case may be if they're not scalable or they're not keeping up this is why the 50% failure rate Okay, after just five years, that's nothing in the big scheme of things. Okay, are you going to go build a house to live in it for like a year unless you're going to flip it? 
And that's what a lot of people do. Let's use another analogy. Why would you bank at Bank of America? Why wouldn't I put my money in Joe's Federal Credit Union or, or the State Bank of Waukegan? Like, why am I going to put my money in the State Bank of Waukegan? Okay, why B of A? Why? Well, it's easy. It's everywhere. ATMs are everywhere. I can send money through Zelle. Like, I, I, it's got a great website. It's just easy. Everybody knows it's easy, right? Why? Why? How about Tesla? How many electric car manufacturers do you know right now that are out there, right? There's a company called Polestar. Have you ever heard of Polestar? It's a Swedish company, right? They're breaking into direct sales. I've seen them start for the last three years. Rivian, have you heard of Rivian? Rivian just got started, right? Rivian literally just got started, okay? And I'm going to tell you right now that, um, oh, hey, how's it going? Oh, my gosh. Uh, good to see you, Martin. Um, Rivian just got started. And people are shelling out $150,000. They're not even getting their trucks yet. So what I'm going to share with you is this. Why would Tesla, who sells a million cars a year now, they're the biggest car brand on earth with the richest man on earth, why would you go buy a Tesla? Well, you're probably thinking, you know what? Either if you don't have a Tesla, I bet you wouldn't turn down a Tesla. It's a desirable, hot, smoking product that you want. That is what you want, you guys. If you hear nothing else today, hear this. More millionaires are created after the five-year mark with billion, with, with billion dollar companies, all right? So when you talk about a Tesla, there's a brand desire. Why? try to reinvent the wheel. Why go out there and take such a massive risk for your family, for your friends? This is my opinion. These are the pros and cons. Now I said pros and cons. I'll give you the pros. I've already touched on them. The pros would be, you know, like I said, first mover advantage. There's a small, tiny percentage that you may end up with just a long time life legacy business. But I'm going to tell you someone who has been involved in a startup, we didn't even get to our stride in five years. Every problem you can imagine happens with a startup and it's not fun. So I wouldn't wish that on my best friend. And if you ask me again, would I ever do a startup? The answer is unconditionally, absolutely not. Unless I had to, unless I was forced to. So guys, you have options when you're choosing a company, you have options when you're choosing a team. Here's what I wanna share with you. Tag your teams if you got value on this. Tag anyone on this or share this with them if they're thinking about what company they should look at, what company they should join. I am not here to bash any company specifically. I'm not here to bash my industry. I'm here to show you the bigger picture, the 30,000 foot view based on my 15 years of experience. Um, I've had enormous success in this industry. I can't tell you how much I've earned, but let's just say I've had enormous success and been blessed more than you can imagine. And I will just say this, your future does matter. Your family does matter. The decision you make right now does matter. So I want to encourage you, please make the right decision, right? Get on the phone with as many people as you can. Talk to as many people as you can outside of the company that you're looking at. Don't just talk to the people that want you to join their company. Talk to other people in the industry that are established. Pick their brains, right? Find out what they went through before you just jump in because a friend posted on social media, this is our new home, grab a spot. All right, guys, have a great day. Thanks for watching. I'm Dave Simney. Let me know if you got some value or if you're watching the replay, hit replay, but please put value on there and share this with someone that might be looking for a new home in the direct sales social selling market. Thanks for joining me. Have a great night. Bye, everybody.